Income Tax 2021-2022 Software Example Rental Property Special Situations Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 well, sir, tax software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want to have access to the forms and schedules which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting point, we got the single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We've got the W-2 income at the 100000 the standard deduction, 12550 to get to the taxable income, 87450 Page 2, calculating the tax then at the 15015 back to page one we're going to first think about having the real estate as a principal residence look at the benefits and the deductibility components then converting it to rental property possibly partially rental property or renting part of our home or possibly then uh, moving and renting the home maybe for a fraction of that first year so first off if we have the principal residence Note that this is the more unusual situation where you might be able to deduct some things for the federal income taxes that is more unusual because usually when you think about income taxes, the things that you would expect to be deductible are those things you needed to expend in order to generate revenue. Personal items you would think not being deductible, the principal home being that major exception where you might be able to deduct then the interest and uh, the property taxes are the two things that first basically come to mind uh, with it. But you'd only get a benefit from it if it was greater than the standard deduction. So if you're moving from a renting situation to a home buying, you really got to take that into consideration because the tax benefit would only be the benefit over and above what you're already getting with the standard deduction. So let's say that we had the rental or that we, we had our home that we were deducting on the good old Schedule A, the Schedule A. So I'm going to say it was 17000 for the interest, 6000 for the property taxes. Going on over to the Schedule A, you can see here on line 12, we bumped up from the standard deduction to the itemized deductions, which you can see on the Schedule A now. So now we've got the Schedule A calculating the mortgage interest, and then we've got the property taxes, and then we've also got like the state taxes which are, are kicking us over the threshold at the 23,879 that's pulling over to page one of the form 1040. So usually the, the principal residence is given as a benefit in that instance. Now notice what we're not taking here. If we purchased the home, we're not taking like the value of the home. I'm not depreciating the home. So I don't, I'm not really tracking like the adjusted basis of the home, although I still would want to do that because when I sell the home, and that will be coming into play but it's not like it's something that i'm depreciating over time so that's something that we don't get as a deduction if it was our personal or principal residence now let's say we rented out like part of our place part of our principal residence let's say we rented out like 10 percent of it well that would mean then now part of it has become basically rental property and we would then have basically the schedule e now i have a different address but we're going to say imagine this is our same uh, address that we're using here and let's say we rented out like 10 percent of our place now the income up top whatever we charge for the income will be what it is i don't need to allocate the income between personal and non-personal because any income i got was on the rental portion so i don't need to do any kind of allocation uh, method there but and so advertising for example would clearly be something directly on the rental property in order to, to rent the property and so on. So I don't need to do an allocation method for something uh, like that that was spent directly for the rental property. But when we're talking about the things such as the interest here, now I'd have to be allocating the interest between the two. And what did I say the interest was like 17,000? So if I pull out my trustee, let's say the, I think I said, let's do it on Excel, interest, total we said was let's say the total interest was the uh 17 000, and then we said let's say we use the square foot method for example to figure the the property for the rental so the rental property let's say was you know 1000 versus total square feet was 10,000. so then we got a ratio that we would have here 
and that ratio is what we're going to basically be using to allocate those items that we need to allocate using the ratio so the interest then we would say would be broken out between rental and uh, personal so the rental would be this times the 10 percent and then the personal would be this minus that or you can calculate it as this times the 90 percent so we're breaking it out 10 you know 10 90. so so that would be the the interest would be 1700 let's say so it's i'd have to say okay this is now 1700 on the interest and then i can go back to the schedule a and I'd have to say, okay, I reported on the schedule A17. Let's subtract out 1,700 so that when I actually look at my forms between the two of them, I'm still going to get a benefit on the schedule A. But now it's the 15.3, the 15.3 plus what I took on the schedule E now, which I can't see yet because I hid it. I hid the schedule E. Where did I put it? I put a, this little one there, hit it. So I'm going to go back on over. Now on the Schedule E, I've got the 1,007. So I still might get a benefit from that one for the personal side and the rental side. But you can imagine situations where it might be better on the rental versus the personal, depending you know, on if you're limited on the standard deductions or if you have a loss, for example, on the rental property. For the for the taxes, you would you would do a similar thing. You would think for the state tax, state taxes. Let's say we said the total was six thousand. I think so. Then you would think then the amount that was rental would be ten percent of that, and the amount that would be personal would be this minus this or ninety percent. So I'd go back on over here and say, all right, taxes. Then I got taxes that I got to deal with. So real estate for the rental we said was was uh, 600 600 and you might even you know put like you might say this is the amount for the 1098 for the 1098 per 1098 and put the full amount here which was the 6000 6000 minus the personal personal part or 90% or you might like say 90% rental for example and that would give you the the minus the six minus the the uh one five thousand four hundred five thousand four hundred and that'll give you the rental component of the 600 so you can kind of see it in the detail when you kind of review your tax return and then you go to the schedule a and you might do something similar you might say okay the taxes i had here was the six but then I'm going to take out the rental rental component, which was 10%, which you might mark in there of 600. 600, that leaves us with the 5,400 where we have here. So then if I pull that on over to the forms, you've got the 600 here, and you might still get the benefit from the Schedule A, and the net of the two of them is something that, that might tie out, well, should tie out to your total wherever you're getting the property tax calculation from your property tax bills, uh, for example. Now, then the other thing you got to think about is the actual building and the land, which you didn't have to basically depreciate before. And that's when you got to think about, OK, I've got to use the lesser of basically my adjusted basis that I purchased it for or the the fair market value and then figure out the portion of that that is allocated uh, to the rental so let's say let's say i let's say I, I figured out that the total amount was building uh 264 706 and then the land was the 35 uh, 294 for example uh if that was for the whole property then i got to say well now i'm going to allocate you know 10 percent of that would be the general idea to the to the rental so i'm going to say basically 10 percent is rental and so if I go back on over, then you're going to got you're going to have your depreciation schedules, say on the building. We talked about, you know, the depreciation methods that would be used for real estate in prior presentations. So just quick example here, we're going to say uh, we acquired it, we put it in as a rental on the one one 
21. The cost is the 264,706, but we're going to say that the portion that we're going to be depreciating at this point is going to be the, the 10. And so that's going to give us our depreciation basis at the 26,471. It's going to be straight line mid month convention. We took the 27.5. So then we got our calculation of the depreciation. Now, other types of stuff, if we put it, if we put it in place, uh, and, it, and it was used specifically for the rental, like we use furniture for the rental property, then then we might have the full amount depreciated for, for those items that we applied directly to the rental, for example. And that would then pull in to the Schedule E here. So that would be the add, so, you know, added items that we might say. So we might have a couple items on the Schedule E that, that we would have to allocate between the Schedule A and the Schedule E. And some items might be allocated directly to the Schedule E, and if we had any kind of uh, depreciation, of course, would also have to be allocated to the Schedule E. We won't, we don't get anything on the Schedule A for it. And then if we have repairs or things like that to the home in general, we might use our same 10% kind of allocation method. If we had repairs or something like that specifically to the rental 10%, then you would think you'd get the full amount of the 10% for the rental activity in that instance. Now let's try to mirror this little example they put us together here. On, on January, our taxpayer bought a condominium apartment to live in. Instead of selling the house she had living in, she decided to change it to rental property. So now she's moving and she's going to take her old home and not sell it but rent it. She selected a tenant and started renting the house on February 1st. Uh, she charged $750 a month. So she started in the middle of the year. So now you've got the situation where she started She's got 11 month rental, one month of a an itemized deduction. She also received 750 security deposit from her tenant. So a security deposit that she has to pay back unless something happens. Therefore, we're not going to include that in income. So her rental expenses for the year are as follows. So she has the mortgage interest, the fire insurance, uh, the miscellaneous repairs and the real estate taxes. So then uh, she must divide the real estate taxes, mortgage interest and fire insurance between the personal use uh, of the property and the rental use of the property. She can deduct she can deduct 11 twelfths of these expenses. Uh, so she had to basically break out these expenses and only deduct 11 twelfths of the of the amount that's going to be allocated between them, real estate taxes and the mortgage interest fire insurance. She can deduct the balance of the real estate taxes and mortgage interest when figuring the amount she can deduct on Schedule A if she itemizes. She can't deduct the balance of the fire insurance because it is a personal expense. So she bought uh, the ho this house in 1987 for 37000 Her property taxes was based on the assessment of 10000 for the land and 25000 for the house. Before changing it to rental property, she added several improvements to the house she figures her adjusted basis uh, as as follows. So on February 1st, when she changed her house to rental property, the property had a fair market value of 152,000. Of this amount, 35,000 was for land and 117 was for the house. Because she adjusted basis is less than the fair market value on the date of the change, she uses the 39,000. So in other words, she can't step up the basis in her property when she converted to rental, she has to use the lower value uh, because you, you know it would be a tax benefit to kind of step it up. Which so that's so as specified for rental property, she must use the straight line method. So we're going to use the twenty five point five year twenty seven point five years depreciation method. She uses the table to figure out the depreciation. So basically, her income statement comes out to this. So we're going to kind of mirror this. Her total rental income was 750 times 11. We don't have to do any allocation there because it's basically straightforward. She's got her expenses, which are the mortgage interest, which we might get a 1098 for, but we would have to take 11 twelfths, applying it to Schedule A and then Schedule uh, E. The fire insurance, we have to take 11 twelfths and apply it to Schedule E, but we can't apply it to Schedule A because it's personal. And then we got the miscellaneous repairs that we apply specifically to Schedule E, the real estate taxes, which we're going to allocate between Schedule E and Schedule A, 11 months to Schedule E, and then the total expenses. So let's try to 
figure that part out. So if I if I was to input this into the schedule E, we'd say, okay, they got income of 8250 that we had. Uh, I'm gonna remove the advertising. We had the mortgage interest, which she allocated 750. So if I look at my worksheet on the interest, she had 750 and now we're not looking at square footage we're looking at rent months versus total months which is which is 11 over 12 so 11 twelfths so now my rental component is going to be 11 twelfths which comes out to uh that the rental part of so hold on a second the interest the mortgage interest is 1800 so that's going to be broken out the 1650 versus personal and the state taxes she said was 1200 which we're going to be breaking out thusly 11 months for the rental and the personal for the one month so that's where we're getting then if i go here for the interest we're getting the 1650 for the 11 months and then we go to the schedule a where the schedule a we're probably not going to be itemizing at this point because it's going to be too low but on the personal side for the interest we're going to have the 150. so i'll just do the 150 and the two of those adding up to the total that might be on the uh, 1098 and then we've got the fire insurance would be on this on the schedule e for the portion that we can take so i'm going to deduct this and i've got insurance i'll just put it here that's going to be the insurance of 92 and then we've got the miscellaneous repairs so i'm going to put that under repairs which was 297 which i don't have to allocate in any special way the real estate taxes then the real estate taxes i'm going to say are we're allocating here we said was the 1100 and the amount on the schedule a for the real estate taxes if i was to get a benefit from them we said was for the one month or just the 100 now the 100 so there we have that for the real estate taxes so if I go back on over, so we got the insurance, the mortgage interest, the repairs, and the taxes. And that brings us up to the 3139. Uh, and then we've got the depreciation. So the house we said was 39,000. So we'll just deal with that because that's the depreciable portion. So I'm gonna say, all right, now the home, if I go to depreciation was cost 39,000, but I'm gonna say we put it in place on February 1st and it's gonna use that mid month convention calculation. So we'll use the makers 27.5 years and that'll calculate it out for the depreciation at the 1241, which we could see on our depreciation schedule here. So it's the 39 on February, straight line, mid-month convention, 27.5 years. We're using the rate from, you know, basically the tables of the 0.0182, which you could see they basically show here in the example. And then we're going to say, okay, well, they bought a dishwasher. So if we put the dishwasher on, on here, so I'm going to say we got a dishwasher, dish dishwasher dishwasher i don't think i spelled it so then she bought a furnace a dishwasher at 125 now we're not going to do a special depreciation here we're just going to use the double declining uh method and this is half year and so there's the 0 0.2 so it was five year property and there's the 85 and then the furnace which were at the 4000 which we're using the 27.5 uh, and basically I may not have used the same dates here but we're basically using a mid-year convention for this item 
and this one up top we would be using a mid-month convention so those then pulling in to the schedule e so that's going to give us our items here and we get down then to the net of the three six nine four which basically ties out you know to our example problem the three six nine four that we saw that we were working through in the prior presentation so that amount the three six uh nine four pulling in to the schedule one pulling in to the form 1040 note that uh, we're not itemizing at this point because we only had one month of those uh, expenditures for the mortgage interest and the real estate taxes which if that's all we had if it was that alone wouldn't be enough to push us over although if we might have you know 11 months of mortgage interest and taxes for example of our new home as we rented out the prior home in which case those could be items that could basically benefit us in that calculation so those are the two kind of examples where you'd have to kind of do a ratio type of thing for example if you're renting out a portion of your principal residence then you've got that kind of complication between the personal and the rental and it, if you rent out then uh your personal residence and you move somewhere else for a fraction of the year that first year fraction is com complex and you've got that interplay between the schedule a deductible items versus the rental uh basically deductible items that you got to do some allocation and you've got to take into consideration what's going to be the basis of the property at the point in time that you convert it from the the personal to the rental use so that you can start to think about the depreciation method where you got to look at the lesser of the fair market value versus the adjusted cost of the property, for example.